Well guys, welcome back to Gideon Stuff, and today, oh you know I'm in a good mood today! What do we have on the screen? We've got a CJRB Feldspar! Woo! <laughs> Round of applause! If you guys know me at all, you know that the CJRB Feldspar is perhaps my very favorite budget knife ever! I love the Feldspar, I cannot get enough of it! It is an absolute home run of a design, in my opinion. And today, we're looking at the latest iteration of the Feldspar, the White Mountain Knives exclusive Buttonlock Feldspar. And I am really happy to do this! So, let's do this! Um, <clears throat> disclaimer, by the way, uh, this video is in no way biased at all. So, <clears throat> obviously, just want to get that out of the way. <laughs> So, here we are, blade length, about three and a half inches, aka the perfect blade length. Okay, so, let's go ahead and do our size comparisons. Let's get our rats out here. Badoop. Badoop. Pretty good size knife, what I would call perfect EDC. By the way, this is uh, the large feldspar body, not the... Tiny one, the little guy. There's our PM2. Whoa, guys, listen to this. And there's our bug out. I have this weird little attachment on the little tripod that holds my camera. It's got like this little handle that allows me to move the, uh, here, let me show you. I can do like, woo, woo, stuff like that. And it's hollow. And so sometimes when I speak, it's like pointing right at my mouth for some reason. It's like, <laughs> I'm like blowing into it. Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about the CGRB Feldspar. That was creepy. It just weirds me out sometimes. I'll be speaking and then also my it, my like breath's being blown back in my face. Okay, so, uh, oh, we're not done yet. This is why you guys like my channel, right? Because of all the stupid stuff. Alright, here's our Civivis, Elementum, Praxis, blah, blah, blah. There we go. And... Let's finish up these size comparisons by comparing it against the CGRB Feldspar. Uh, this is probably a stupid comparison because they are literally the exact same knife. One just has a button thrown on it. But there you have it. For a more um, sensical size comparison, let's go ahead and throw on the Civivi Conspirator, another button locky type of dude. Alrighty, so, what are we looking at here in terms of our specs? We have a satin finished blade, which I need to clean, of AR RPM9 steel. Really, really nice. I love that steel. We have black micarta handles, car scales, contoured beautifully. We have what I believe are aluminum pivot collars, and we have the button lock. There you go, guys. Let's go ahead and go to the cutting footage. All right, guys, it's about to rain, but we got to talk about one of my favorite ever things in the world. The CJRB Feldspar. Yeah, you guys knew what it was. You guys know how it is. I love the CJRB Feldspar. And now we have the White Mount exclusive button lock version. Pretty cool, huh? In fact, there's only a few things I love more than the feldspar. One of them is fossil hunting. You guys want to see an incredible slab of fossils that I recently found? I don't care. I'm going to show you anyways. <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? <laughs> uh, yes. I often just go out in the middle of nowhere and haul back very heavy chunks of rock. But this is just chock full of so many different fossils. There's three different species of brachiopods in here, including, where is my favorite one at? Right here. This one here, a little bit closer. <sighs> Sorry for wasting your time, guys. I just get excited. This is a Neospinifer. And I believe there's another one on here, too. These are some of the most rare brachiopods, in my area at least. 
And so whenever I find them, I get very, very excited. I think this might be the top of one right here. Yeah, just an incredible, incredible chunk of rock. But anyways, that's not what we're here for. I just want to show that off because I'm a nerd. What we're actually here for is a feldspar. So let's go ahead and get started with this bad boy. We're looking at black micarta handles, which are contoured and soft and super... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. And a satin finish AR RPM9 blade. So... Let's talk about the Ergos. That's one of the things I love most about the Feldspar, guys. It is just so dang comfortable in your hand. And yeah, this one is no exception. The micarta makes it even more comfortable. This is very soft micarta, high quality. Just you hold this knife and you feel like the knife is just giving your hand a hug. It's exceptional. So I really, really like that. Um, next, let's talk the action. It's a button lock. Everyone loves these. And yes, it is super, super fidgety. Reverse flick it, thumb flick it. I heard reports that some of these had a little bit um, mushy uh, detents. Um, I've handled two of these and both of them felt fine to me. This one is just excellent. So I really, really like that. How's it carry? We have a reversible Thank goodness, because button locks are very lefty friendly. We have a reversible pocket clip set into the scales with recessed screws. Let's go ahead, get our tilt down. And yeah, as you might expect, it just works excellently in and out of the pocket. I love the uh, CJRB clip. I think it's a really good clip and it works good here. All right, let's go ahead and get into our cutting. Right about there. So, as I already said, AR RPM9 blade. I love AR RPM9, one of my favorite budget steels. It's a, it's a proprietary steel for Artisan slash CGRB. And I think it's really, really good. Very stainless, decently tough, and it holds an edge for a good long time. So, this particular knife measured in about 24 thousandths behind the edge. That's not the thinnest thing ever, however, the blade stock isn't terribly thick, and this knife just, it cuts so much better than you might expect. Love, love that. Slices very, very well. Next, let's go ahead and do our rope pull. So some pretty tough rope, let's see how it handles it. Very, very nice. This blade shape, even though it has kind of a thin tip and it's really good for poking, is also just got an excellent edge for slicing. Really, really great. Let's do some pushes. I do not think it's gonna do very good here. Oh, okay. Alrighty then. Actually did better than I thought. And I guess that makes sense. Knives that are a little bit thicker behind the edge tend to crunch the rope better, but this cut wasn't too good. This one was fairly deep. This one got pretty deep. So, not too bad. Let's see how the uh, grind is. Flat grind on here, see if it catches. Oops. Okay, that did very well. Very, very well, especially for being, um, you know, relatively thick behind the edge. We were able to get nice, thin slices. The grind felt very even. It didn't bind up. On that last cut, I tried to go super thin, and it couldn't quite handle it. It did um, kind of shake out a little bit, but uh, yeah, overall, not bad whatsoever. Let's get back to the table. Alrighty guys, we're gonna, whoa, 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 whoa. There's two of them now? Is my feldspar multiplying? Man, I wish my feldspars would multiply. I mean, they kind of already do, but not by themselves. You know, it involves me taking out my wallet. Anyways, yes, I have two of these. This one, 
was gifted to the channel by my good buddy, Sharpen Blade. Go check out his channel. Please subscribe. I will leave it linked down in the description below. This one I bought for myself. You can see Dirty Blade, nice clean blade, except for Gideon's fingerprints. Dirty Used Blade, nice clean blade. So, this one we are actually going to be doing a giveaway with. Uh, I'm going to be doing this over on Instagram. Please go follow me on Instagram to get in on this giveaway. It's going to be my 1,000 follower giveaway on Instagram. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Sharpen Blade, for sending this over. I very rarely get to handle two examples of the same knife, and so I really jumped at the opportunity to handle these two. Um, they feel identical. Wow, yeah, yeah. I almost cut myself. In fact, did I cut myself? Eh, it broke the skin a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> this knife has never been used to cut anything except my finger just now. Because I'm a dumb dumb. <laughs> Actually, I think I did cut a couple pieces of paper and like, uh, I think I cut a couple of things with this. But um, yeah, other than that, it has only, only damaged my poor, poor finger. Look at that. The wounds, the wounds. It... Anyways, <laughs> if you want to win this bloodthirsty knife, go ahead and go over to my Instagram. Check me out there. And please, subscribe to Sharpen Blade on YouTube and follow him on Instagram as well because he's the reason we get to do that giveaway. So, Mike, if you're watching, thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, so... Before we get into the Feldspar, I know this is going to be a long review, guys. I'm sorry. I just, I love this knife so much. I've got a gush and, and everything. I want to bring your attention to this rock right here. Well, Gideon, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to show you. So, Feldspar. Feldspars are minerals. They're rock-forming minerals. They're among the most populous minerals in the Earth's crust. They're everywhere. And as a geologist, I have known a lot about feldspars. And they're really, really cool. So, this rock here, I found this at work the other day. It's like, what the heck is this? Well, this is actually a somewhat rare type of metamorphic rock called unikite. Or unikite. I've heard it pronounced both ways. But... What's really, really interesting about this are the minerals in here. So, as you can hopefully tell, you can see that it's got this green color. That green is a mineral called epidote. And then, let me look here and see if I can find a good place to show off the next mineral. We might have to get a flashlight here. Just a second. Un momento. You know, uh, sad story. Oh, I'm back, by the way. I actually lost my favorite EDC flashlight on the 4th of July. What terrible luck. But, <laughs> anyways, we have a replacement here. Um, oh, and if you're not interested in this part of the video, just fast forward, skip it, till you find the spot where I'm talking about the knife again. If you haven't already, you probably have. But, uh, yeah, just uh, double tap the screen until your little finger wears out. Okay, so let's look here. All right, so you uh, you kind of see it here. See that little thing right there? That's actually a little tiny clear ball of quartz, and they're all over this little thing. So we have epidote, and we have quartz. Then you see all these pink minerals? You know what those are? Yeah, those are a feldspar. Those are orthoclase. Really, really cool. I love how pink they are. And a lot of these... You can use. Uh, they, they demonstrate a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the the identifying properties of orthoclase very well in their shape. Orthoclase is a monoclinic crystal system, and uh, yeah, it just looks gorgeous. These rocks are often used as a semi-precious stone. This is the only one I've ever found. In fact, um, I've never really heard of anyone else finding very many in New Mexico. In fact, I don't think at all. So that's pretty cool. I have gone back to the location where I found this and tried to find more, and I just can't. But, uh, yeah, really, really cool. Um, if I got this cut and polished, it would look absolutely gorgeous. I kind of like the raw look, but maybe I'll take it and I'll get it cut in half or something. But anyways, orthoclase, as we've mentioned before, 
um, is a uh, potassium feldspar. You might have mentioned, you might remember from other videos we've talked about the different types of feldspar. Orthoclase is um, a an end member of potassium feldspar. And whoops, someone's phone is ringing. Sorry about that. But anyways, yeah. Really, really cool. Look at that. And actually, interestingly enough, this green epidote is actually um, altered uh, plagioclase feldspar. When uh, plagioclase feldspar is altered, it becomes epidote. Of course, being an igneous rock, and now my clock is dinging. Shut up! Stop interrupting my video, various technologies! Anyways, continuing. <laughs> As a metamorphic rock, this started out as something else, uh, a granite, most likely. And so when metamorphosis occurs, the rock is subjected to extreme pressure or heat or both, and it changes the chemical composition of the rock. And this can cause a lot of the minerals in the rock to come apart and then reform at different uh, thresholds to form other minerals. And so that's how we get this epidote from plagioclase feldspar but uh yeah just really really awesome find i'm very i'm very very pleased with it this is something really interesting to me i do need to clean it a little bit better with some some alcohol or something but uh yeah really really cool i'm gonna set that right back over there our beautiful beautiful unikite all right let's go ahead and get into the review of what you're all here for, the Bunlock Feldspar. Let's do it. All righty, it's time at last to get into what I'm liking about the CGRB Feldspar Bunlock. Everything, it's absolutely perfect um, in every way. Go get one. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching Gideon's stuff. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Adios. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Um... <laughs> Like everything, no matter how biased I am towards a certain design, I have specific likes and nitpicks. All right, so the number one thing I like, the feldspar design. Guys, it's a fantastic EDC knife. Everything about this knife just works so good. This blade is really, really excellent. Let's just start there. Um, and they're, the feldspars are not the thinnest behind the edge, but they cut really, really well. And especially as an EDC tool, they work nice. The AR RPM9 steel on this is a fantastic addition. I really love AR RPM9. It's a great steel. Um, in fact, all of, uh, CGRB is moving all of their knives to AR RPM9, so I hear. And uh, yeah, good job. That is a great choice. So love that. Uh, next thing, thumb studs are really, really nice. Like that a whole lot. Um, and let's just go on to the action. Yes. Both of the feldspars I have work perfectly. In fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get a little bit desperado on you guys. Cut. Try again. Coolness. Engage. Ah. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, I find them... To I think they work great. I like the thumb stud button lock combination, especially for fidgeting, because you deploy here... And then your thumb just slides over and you can close it. Uh, really, really great action. If you don't drop it on the table for some reason. I don't know why I did that. But I did. Yeah, great action. Um, I, I think they work fantastic. Uh, really, really fun. I'm not... I, I, I'm still not the biggest button lock guy. But this is very fun. I do admit. So really, really cool there. Uh, next thing I like, that pop of blue. I love that CGRB does pivot collars. They're just so classy. The, it, it, a pivot collar to me is an easy way to make a budget knife feel just a little extra. Just a little more bougie. And so, yeah, that's really, really great. Next thing, this knife is pretty ambidextrous. You have the reversible pocket clip. Button locks are great for lefties. In fact, I'd argue button locks are better for lefties than righties. Um, especially when it comes to use. But yeah, really, really good. I'm glad they did that. Next thing, the pocket clip is fantastic. I like the CGRB clip. I think it works fantastically in and out of the pocket. And especially on the feldspar, it does not bother me in the hand. The clip in this case is, 
wow, my computer just dinged at me. Everything's trying to interrupt me today. But, um, <laughs> focus camera. Why is... Anyways, they have the clip recessed with flat screws. That's exactly the way I like it. Good job. Um, the ergonomics are just fantastic. These contoured micart micarta scales feel amazing. You have the inset liners. That pocket clip disappears in your hand. You can't even feel it. And you just get so much leverage into your cuts. I can choke up into this area here. Really, really nice. Big, big fan of that. Um, centering and everything is pretty much dead on. Maybe a little off to this side, but pretty much dead on. Um, yeah, really, really nice there. And, um, I think that, uh, I, I, I like, um, the, the White Mountain Knives exclusiveness of this. <laughs> I'm glad White Mountain Knives did. A button lock feldspar. You know, button locks are the big thing right now. Look for all your favorite knives to become button locks. You know, we've already had the button lock elementum. You know, look for next the button lock buck 110. Wait, they already have that. Don't they have an automatic buck? Oh no, but it's still a back lock. Hmm. Button lock buck 110. You know, get the fuds in on the button lock craze. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I think it's cool that they did this. And I always appreciate CGRB and Artisan's exclusives. It seems they really go above and beyond more than, more than you know, other companies might do uh, with their exclusives. Every exclusive, I have a lot of CGRB exclusives, and I, they all feel really, really good. They feel like like different knives than, than the original one. You know, you're not just getting a new color on the scales. You're not just getting, oh, you know, now this one has a coated blade. You're getting a knife that feels like its own thing. And I appreciate that a lot. I really, really like that. So yeah, that's what I like about this knife. It is just a tried and true design. It, it's fantastic. The implementation of the button lock adds a little bit of uniqueness to it. It's very fidgety. It's fun, comfortable in your hand, nice and cutty and slicey and all that good stuff. Really, really nice. Let's go ahead and get into what I don't like. Um, I do, I, I've said this with all the feldspars, I do wish they had jimping up here. Not a huge deal, but, you know, it is something. Um, the satin finish on this, I do not like as much as I thought I would when I ordered it. And, uh, yes, it does take marks pretty easy, but I'm not really a big satin finish guy anyway, so I don't know why I went for the satin finish on this, but there you have it. Um, and the button is a little bit odd. Like, I, I don't know what it is about it, but... I mean, it works. I kind of wish they'd had like a little bit of a cutout around it or, or, or something, but really not a big deal. And the next thing I'll mention just because is I've heard people have had some quality control issues with these. Uh, like I said, I've handled two now and both of them felt absolutely amazing. So I can't really speak on that, but you know, it might be something to keep in mind. And other than that, you know, I'm not the biggest button lock fan, but on an EDC knife like this, I think it works just fine. It makes sense. And I actually, I like, as I already said, I like thumb studs with button locks a lot better than, um, where did I put that? Conspirator. A lot better than uh, flipper tabs with button locks. So, yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and get to my final conclusions. All right, final conclusions. It's everything I love about the feldspar, except now as a button lock. One thing I forgot to mention is that there are a great many varieties of this uh, knife that you can get at White Mountain Knives. I, I think they're all sold out right now, but they have G10 and carbon fiber ones, and this micarta, you can get this with a black blade. Uh, really, really cool. They all look great, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I just, I really do like this knife. This is probably, probably my favorite button lock in my collection, to no one's surprise. I mean... It's a feldspar, so of course it's going to be my favorite. But the feldspar is just such a simple, clean, go-to EDC. And I recommend it to everyone. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, everyone should have a feldspar of some kind. They have the big one. They have the small one. There's no small version with a button lock yet. I doubt there will be, but, you know, if there is, that'd be cool. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just great. It's great. Um, personally... I like this version because it's like got the black and the blue. It's kind of 
Gideon stuff colors. I know I'm just, I'm vain like that. <laughs> but it really is a fantastic knife. And, you know, this video might have been a little bit biased. One thing I forgot to mention that I don't really like is I don't like the placement of the lanyard hole on any of the feldspars. But, um, yeah. Anyways, you know, th this might be a little bit of a biased video, but, you know, I like the feldspar. What else can I say? What, what, what else can I say? I really like the feldspar, and, yeah, I recommend it. Price on these. These came in around $60, I believe. You know what? We have my handy-dandy magic information getter sitting right here, a.k.a. the computer. White Mountain Knives. Let's go to their website. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know why I'm still recording instead of pausing the video while I look this up, but you know what? I'm not doing that for whatever reason. Okay, goodbye. Let's go ahead and where is the search function here? Wow, I haven't used the... Uh... Jeez, I, I only look at knife sites on my phone, really. Um... <laughs> What? And where is the search feature? Oh, there it is. Wow, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, fifty nine ninety nine, sixty bucks on the dot, pretty much. Uh, you know what? I think that's fair. I think that's fair for what you're getting here. Um, I really don't have a complaint with that. So. Yeah. Anyways, we're probably going to wrap up this review right here, guys. Just, it's a knife I really, really like. And, yeah, it gets my recommendation. In this new form, it's still awesome. And, yeah, just a great EDC. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Or dislike and unsubscribe and leave a mean comment. Whatever you choose. And uh, I've been Gideon. I'll see you in the next one.